Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's The Retro. We have somebody that's basically decided to take Rob's job. Chandler. I'm back. He's Chandler back. Baskins. <laughs> yes, if he doesn't come back, Chandler is here forever. Hopefully, Rob does come back at some point in time. Uh, and hopefully, he makes that get it up to us by, like, bringing us food. By us, I mean me. <laughs> Uh, so today we have a really, really cool lineup. Uh, we get to talk to Tim Winfred, who is doing some amazing content out there on the internet. Oh my gosh, I'm like so excited for y'all to meet him and like learn about all the exciting things that he's doing. And then on TC39 time, we're talking about an old but new proposal, decorators. Yes, that are coming to your browser soon. And then we will have the subtweet in which we talk about a new world tour that's launching soon. And that is gonna be followed by, well, maybe not in that order, but we will also be talking about on the double click, uh, a new release of a Headless CMS, uh, it's Headless CMS V2, so it's been out for a while. But if you haven't heard of Storyblock, which is kind of like a component-based what do we call it? Component first, headless CMS, I guess. You know, <laughs> something like that. About, and I'm going to learn about headless CMSs too. Yeah, it's going to be really fun. Um, if you all don't know us, my name is Tracy. You can follow me on Twitter at Lady Leet. And I'm Chandler. You can follow me on Twitter at Baskins Chandler. Cool. Let's get started. Welcome to this week's water cooler. Today we have Tim Winfred. You can follow him on Twitter at Contemporary. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about like what you need to do as a developer to improve, Tim has been creating some amazing blog posts lately that are stirring up a storm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me and congrats on getting awarded for the third time by Microsoft as an oh, yeah. MVP. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but so, so Tim, we, we'd love to talk about, I mean, okay, so I'm familiar with like two blog posts that you wrote. Um, I want to show the first one. It is, uh, you know, 31 front end development study topics to improve your code quality. And just like, what's inspiring you to do this? Like, what, what do you think are like, can you get, give us like high level view of this article? And also like, I heard it's super famous now, right? Like, <laughs> um, I mean, for this week, <laughs> it's trending in the top for the week. It's the second, there's one react post that I can't Amazing. see to beat out and I don't think I'm gonna be able to, but um, yeah. So this was inspired because, you know, as a developer, there's so many things you constantly have to learn um, and, I, I've started down the 100 Days of Code project because of your interactions on Twitter. I see you interacting with people all the time. Oh, and it awesome. inspired me to start that. Um, and then I decided to write this blog post after sort of talking to a bunch of different developers. That fits so perfectly on this. I know, seriously. I was like, <laughs> okay, do I have all 31? <laughs> um, yeah, it, I, I just talked to a bunch of developers and sort of put that together as like, a study guide for myself. And I was like, yeah. you know, if it's going to help me, it can help somebody else. So absolutely, that's what I wrote in the intro to the article. And clearly I think it, it's resonated with people. I love that. So is each one going to become like its own? Okay. He, here's, here's my vision. Okay. I always, this is why my open source projects like never, never get completed. <laughs> each one can become a blog post. And then after you write all the blog posts, you publish a book on it. <laughs> you know, that would be, that would be a great, uh, I think that's you a great should, idea. You that's should do idea. it. <laughs> Maybe I will. You know, this, this article looking at the analytics has actually gotten more views from Google traffic than it has from Amazing. the dev.to. So I'm not sure what, they don't give you the analytics on that, but yeah. Chandler, which one would you pick? Like, which topic would you pick to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail? I don't know. I'm just kind of like taken aback by the, just how many there are. 
<laughs> like, like yeah. and you even call it out, it's intimidating at first. And, <laughs> right. you know, I'm just like looking through these. And I'm like, like, do I really like, and, and, you know, you do like you use most of these in your day to day job as a developer, but you just don't realize it. Right. Until you like have the full platter in front of you and uh, going through it. But, you know, for me, for me, uh, the design patterns. Um, yeah. I, I read your post on the design patterns a couple of weeks ago and I loved it and I bookmark it and I go back to it every now and again. But I, I just that's what that's like my favorite. I love design patterns. Yeah, oh. I loved I loved writing that and come, like putting that together because it's really helped me so much in my code quality, like mm -hmm. knowing when to separate stuff out and how to, how to structure it in general has really made my code code so much cleaner. I think that this would be me like I'm, if I'm looking at this as you know a developer, I'm like okay. <laughs> Uh, number seven, <laughs> unit and integration testing. Okay, just Mocha, Chai, Cypress, X, like, do I have to learn them all? So it'd be so great to have like some guidance on like, should I just learn one? Should I learn all of them? And then I would love to know like, okay, you know, of them, maybe even just like, hey, here's some resources for like, you know, t 10, 10 tips for learning just, you know, like a list, making a list out of this list or something. But it would comfort me to know that I didn't have to master like all the testing framework. Yeah, that's a cool, <laughs> cool point. Maybe like underneath, like underneath that one, right? Maybe put some articles that link to different resources, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was what what I was kind of thinking that I would. Well, in the moment, you inspired yeah. me with this whole like, what am I going to do with it moving forward? Write a book, obviously. <laughs> Maybe, who knows? Um, so in the future, like with, with me getting all of these ideas from talking to people, you know, yeah. that could be a great way forward as well. Like take each of these and go to de to developers, front end, full stack, JavaScript, yeah. wherever you want to take it and just sort of ask them, like, what do you think is important to know on this topic? And yeah. if I were a beginner starting from square one on each of these, what would be the roadmap in this specific area? Because number 18, the front end frameworks, that's huge. Like yeah. react on its own. <laughs> <laughs> right. Every single one of these things. So yeah. No, I think that would be really helpful. I think uh yeah. But okay, so I'm just like looking at 31. It's like, okay, 31. So like it could take you just 31 weeks to write a book. Or you do two a week and it could take you like 15 weeks to write a book. So like there's a lot of Sorry, but I get all excited about that. I'm like, let's plan. Let's plan the next year for you. No. <laughs> but I think also, like, you know, Sean Wang, if you're familiar with him, um, he's Swix on t Twitter, S-W-Y-X. Um, he has a lot of, like, really good kind of, like, listy, formatty type things like this that I absolutely love. And he's become such, like, a, a wealth of knowledge for people who just, like, need this information and like this is just so practical and i mean that's why it's number two on dev.2 yeah you know as i was outlining it um, uh -huh. like if you look at the the url for it i think it's like 28 um oh yes i see it 28 yes yeah, I mean, even after yeah. i published it i went back and i like added one more and i republished it and then oh, i went back really and cool. i added one more and i republished so you know i over 24 hours i added three more into it so. Oh my God. And it's I can keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really a living document, right? Mm -hmm. Like as stuff comes and goes in JavaScript, you know, just always updating and always keeping abreast of things that totally. are coming and going. Yeah. I and I love this too, by the way. Yeah. And yeah. this blog post is amazing. You said this is like one of the, this took off too, right? Yeah. So this was, I think, the second blog post I wrote. And it took me a week to write this um, mm -hmm. because for each one of the design patterns, not all of them are necessary in JavaScript. Um, right. but I, I sort of followed this article from Lambda test, mm -hmm. um, which I think that their, uh, their post was maybe a little bit snagged from other places as well. Uh -huh. um, Cause I found some of the same examples in other locations, but I went through each of those and sort of wrote my own implementations of them. Instead of just copying and pasting, I went nice. and I read and I looked up other articles related to those topics. 
and was like, okay, let me get a great understanding of it and yeah. then see what I can output as well. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, if you guys want to learn about design patterns, uh, definitely follow Tim on dev.2 or on Twitter, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, just loving what you're doing and like really excited about what's coming Thank next you. for you. Yeah. Thank you. And you're the one who inspired me. I reached out to you. Oh my gosh, you. no. <laughs> you are. I reached out to you on Twitter and was like, hey, I'm struggling. What should I do? And you're like, have you thought about blogging? And then I wrote a blog post and then I wrote another one and bam, it took off. And I was like, I'm not stopping. Well, this is totally inspirational for me too, because I've been like digging into blockchain stuff and I'm like, whoa, I'm learning so much right now. Like I better start blogging yes. about it. So I at least have like two, two blog posts, uh, the name, the, yep. <laughs> the name of two blog posts outlined. Um, one of them is, I just wrote it actually. What the hell is blockchain and why do I car care? <laughs> exactly. And those are the type of articles that I constantly see trend on. Dev. Yeah. You know, like people are all there to learn just like you. Are. And I think like that authenticity of writing it from the standpoint of I'm not perfect and I yeah. don't know everything, but yeah. here's what I've learned recently and I wanted to share it like really resonates. I think so. Like when I started, uh, when I started doing development, I'd like literally write blog posts, like make sure that I knew what I was doing and like on a, almost like a guideline for myself, you know? Oh, yeah. And then I started publishing them and I didn't think about like if anybody would read them or not. I just needed them for myself and they were really popular, you know? Like I remember when I was doing like Angular material, you know, when it was an alpha, I just like <laughs> for some reason got stuck on wanting to do it. Um, but you know, it's the same thing, right? And I think you've proven too, like it's like, write what you care about. Like it doesn't matter where you are in your career. You don't have to be an expert. You can be an expert, sure. But like, don't get stuck on like, oh man, what's gonna impress people? Yeah. It's just like, write from your heart. And if you do, then you know, you'll, you'll see success. So Chandler, what's your next blog post? I don't know. I'm like you. I already have three queued up, and just, <laughs> like, and they're all in bits and pieces. But you know, I, you make great points, and the learning in public. You know, you learn something, write a blog right. post about it, give back to the community, and that does something for yourself too. It kind of mm -hmm. submits it. Right? Yeah. And there's like that old doctor mantra, right? Where you see one, you do one, and then you teach one. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I love exactly. that. Exactly, and writing it down, like exactly writing it down. Like you, you can't lie. You can't lie and be like, hey, this is, you know, what I think it is. You write it down. And if you don't know, then you're like, let me go look up that answer before I tell the world what it is. And I'm totally wrong. And someone calls me out on it. <laughs> and it helps you become a better developer because you can see a lot of senior developers and they can't walk through their code. They just don't, they know it works. It's good, but they can't explain it. Right. So like, generally, I feel like, when we look at you know senior developers, we look at like, okay, can you talk to somebody about your code? Because if you can't, then you know huh, it's just not as good. You know, are you a good developer? I mean, yes, yeah. but like, no. <laughs> yeah, you, you connect the doodad to the thingamabob, and then right. <laughs> You wire those together with some other things. <laughs> well, I love it. So everyone definitely follow Tim on Twitter at Contemporary. And we're so excited to see like what's next for you. And let us know, like let us know, you know, your next blog post so that we can like support you and everything. Thank you. I will. All right. We're all set. Thank you so much. It was so much fun having you. Yeah, I appreciate your time. I look for, I can't believe we've known each other for so long and I've transitioned into being a guest on your podcast, on your show. <laughs> Dude, you. yeah. Chandler was so funny. Like my first my first startup, I remember. And I think we were doing like it was like opening we were like celebrating the launch of the office or something. It was shortly and that after, night. Yeah. Yeah, and then like I dropped my phone down the elevator. Yeah, <laughs> that's bad. And then, like, oh, and, like my co-founder and a bunch of other people like created this like stick thing and like retrieved it for me. It was, 
I yeah. don't know what the hell's going on there, but. <laughs> I had come in for an interview and I remember you saying, yeah, my phone's somewhere down there. I don't. <laughs> oh my God. It seems like so long ago. I and mean, that was like eight, nine. Probably about 10 years ago. Even longer. Yeah. 11 That's years ago, maybe? Story. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Just That's crawl. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool, Tim. Well, we'll let you know when it's out and thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye. Take care. All right, welcome back to TC39 Time with me, Chandler Baskins. You can follow me on Twitter at Baskins Chandler. And today, today this is a old but new one, Decorators. It's been around the block a couple <laughs> of times. We've seen a couple of proposals. Um, we even have them in TypeScript, which is pretty cool. And and there's a Babel uh, legacy um uh, decorator like it transpiles or whatever but this one's a new proposal and it sh it shakes things up a little differently uh but keeps them the same so you know still the same basic so three years ago three years ago but finally it's gaining finally, traction is that right yeah, i guess so but you know looking through the readme it said that there was you know several different ones before it right and i mm. remember there's been ones that have been shut down yeah uh, but i guess this one's gaining traction uh, has it so just to ask you, because I know you follow this along closer, but like, has it been shut down, like, based on like the syntax? Like, I think it's, I don't think it's necessarily syntax. I mm -hmm. think it, I think it is more like internal bits. Like, what is the, what is the functionality of it? Like, where does it happen? Uh, what? So this is like politics. Has? It's like, like, basically, okay, you get this bill but you need to donate a billion dollars in this bill for this other thing if you want it it's like <laughs> yeah it's kind of well in this specific case it's like hey we don't want this called until the the prototypes defined and other people are like no we don't we don't want it called we want it called before the prototypes defined you know mm -hmm, it's just like mm -hmm. like where when does it happen uh but this one's a little this one's cool because it, it's it adds decorators but it also adds a new uh object onto classes uh, mm -hmm. for uh, basically in classes, right? We have our getters and we have our setters, but this one adds something called accessor, which is basically an Ooh. object on the class with the getters and setters. There we go. Class accessors. Uh, yeah. And the, and the cool thing is, is this doesn't just apply to classes. This is going to apply to fields. Uh, it's going to apply to methods and, you know, your class accessors. So not just classes, nice. but all kinds of other stuff. That's amazing. Okay, so I saw stage two. Is that still correct? It's still in stage two. Stage two. It was present. It was present. Pre wow, words are hard today. It was presented <laughs> last. It was presented in 2020 September, uh -huh. and I think they're still iterating on the spec. Nice. Um, you know, a great little thing. If you go down to the FAQ section, uh -huh. it is, how does this compare to the other versions of decorators that we have? How does Ooh, it that's a good one. The, how does it compare with the what we know in TypeScript? Right. I mean, oh my God, there's a lot of implications forever. from this. I mean, like Angular is pretty decorator heavy, you know? There we go. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So what's going to happen? Like if this is introduced, like how does that affect Angular? I don't know. That's Angular decorators. That's a good okay. question because they rely on the experimental TypeScript decorators. But if you look at it, uh, they're, they're pretty similar, but there's yeah. still some differences. Yeah. It's yeah. an interesting proposal, nevertheless. And, you know, a cool thing at the very bottom of the document, mm -hmm. uh, they, they have a call out that says, why is it taking so long? And, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I like that. They're, they're, and it's just in a, a great explanation. There we and go. Just another reminder that we're all human and we all have lives going on outside of this. And yeah. we all make mistakes. And the point is to realize those mistakes, fix them, move on. So. And make it do it slow, you know, slow, slow, slow and steady wins the race, especially when it comes to standards. I love it. Okay, there. we're truly sorry about the delay here. Yeah. We understand that this causes real problems in the JavaScript ecosystem. It took us a long time for everyone to get on the same page. That is the biggest call out I there. Mean, I mean, that is true there, but in lots of other places too. Yeah, they're like, quick, the Angular people aren't here. Let's move it. Let's right, implement it. 
do it before somebody on Google says something. We're working to develop better communication with TC39. Yeah, cool, awesome. Well, we love that. Okay, so you can check this out. And um, Chandler, are you using this now? Are you? I do most of my development in Angular, so I'm right. using TypeScript experimental decorators, which right. don't feel so experimental to me. I mean, which <laughs> they're just part of my everyday dev these days, so. Yeah. I will, well, though. Yeah. Well, why are you excited about it? You know, I'm excited. What What makes me excited is to see decorators come into other frameworks like Vue and oh, React and see, yeah. and see, you know, or even like um, if you're- You mean like Angular was right all along, you guys? I mean, they were with TypeScript. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, it's just, I, I just love seeing the language evolve and I love seeing people uh, take hold on things and then, you know, everybody else- uh, catches up to you so i think it's nice, nice. hit me up on twitter if you you know want us to go to your local city or reactworldtour.com will be up you know i think we're launching it in october and then view world tour will be happening sometime in 2022 so it's pretty exciting yeah, totally. And I love just seeing all the local meetups and yeah. all the speakers and just, I think it's, I think it's amazing. Uh, yeah. It's like somebody has already DM'd you about React World Tour. Right? They were listening to this before it was even released. <laughs> <laughs>
the business people don't have to put in a gyro ticket for changing text, right? And, yes. You know. Oh my God, uh, I love that you said that. Decoupling between the business and engineering. It's a fun, it's a fun word, isn't it? Decoupling. I mean, that's like the best. Like, I like want to use it all the time now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So yeah, I mean, so Chandler, I'll tell you that like in the headless CMS world, there's like so many different headless CMSs. Some are like GraphQL first, for example, like Sanity. Um, everybody has their own like value proposition. So, I mean, you really do have to explore CMSs and figure out like which one works for you. But, you know, this is a very component based. So Storyblock is very component based, which, you know, obviously a lot of developers love. But again, it's like, what is, you know, like what what's the what's the thing that works for you the most? And what are the different value propositions off um, all the different CMSs? So, yeah, check it out. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you're using a headless CMS or your favorite headless CMS. And um, definitely follow Chandler on Twitter so that you can educate him too uh, and maybe tell him what your favorite CMSs are so that like he can, you know, if, if enough of us tweet at Chandler about this, he's going to all of a sudden become a React developer. I will finally finish my personal website with a headless CMS. Right? <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for watching this week's The Retro. We hope you had a lot of fun with us. Uh, I am personally super excited to see Tim's book at some point in time. Chandler, how long do you actually give him until he releases his book? Uh, I'm putting it on my calendar right now. Q2 2022. Q2 2022. I mean, that's, that's a lot. like, a I mean, that's stuff. like, that's like four. Four times three, that's like 12, no, four times three, April three, 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 2022. nine months. That's like nine months away. Nine right? months away. There'll be more added. Great, great <laughs> post. <laughs> like, okay. So Tim, you have nine months to release this book. We are counting on it. And Hurry like, up. hopefully we get like some shirts and like some swag and like, hopefully we get a copy. Signed copy. <laughs> yeah. And um, hopefully all of y'all like get started on decorators um, and start using it. Unless Chandler, you're like, don't use it yet. It's stage two. You're use, totally. You should totally use the, the TypeScript experimental decorators. Yeah. They're awesome. Okay. So convert everything to TypeScript, forget JavaScript, and use uh, TypeScript experimental decorators. That's, that's what you should be doing like today. All right. Well, we had so much fun with you today. We have. And before we go, Tracy, I just wanted yeah. to give a shout out to my fingers because I can always count on them. Oh, that was good. Okay. Wait, but we got to do what Mark, uh, Mark Thompson always does. Put your hand up your fingers. Give yourself that high five. Cause that was a great Absolutely. dad joke. <laughs> All right, and don't forget, you can always continue the conversation. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter at Lady Leap. And you can follow me on Twitter at Baskins Chandler. Cool. We'll see you next week. Bye.